Are there any other red red flashing lights that we should be aware of? Or are those two of the big indicators? The biggest one, again, is tracking trends is an understanding of where we are and how we got here to see where we're going. So let's go back to the COVID war. Again, it begins on Chinese Lunar New Year, January 2020, the year of the rat. China locks down. You stop the Hong Kong protests going on. I used to be on Hong Kong TV, 2019. One million people out of 7.5 million were going, taking to the streets. When they launched the COVID war, that was the end of it. Whoop, emergency act, it's over. Number two. Where does, when does the COVID hit the America? In February. Where does it hit? Kirkland, Washington. Kirkland, Washington. Where, again, what, what's that? Where, oh, old age homes. Who are the first people to close down? That little guy with the beard, that Dorsey freak, supposed to go to South Africa, wrote about it as it was happening in the Trends Journal in February. Everybody worked from home. We don't want you in the office. We don't want to spread COVID. Work from home. The tech industry boom. Everybody's going home. They're closing down the colleges, the schools. Everybody's working at home, learning from home, buying from home. Built up the tech industry. Went berserk. Going back to commercial buildings. Now people are home month after month after month. They're saying to themselves, holy Christ, I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning to drive an hour and a half, a commute an hour and a half each way. I'm not doing that anymore. I could work from home. I own, let's say I, I, I'm a renting office space. I got 12 floors. Yeah, listen, stay home two days a week. I don't need 12 floors. I only need three. I'll cut back my expenses. Now, all the businesses that depended on commuters, dry cleaners, drying up. Over a third of them are out of business. Boop. Oh. Wow. Happy uh, happy hour, Friday? Nope. Friday's one of the least days now that people are going back to work. Monday and Friday. They want a longer weekend. Going back Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So all the businesses that depended on it. So now you're going to start seeing defaults on debts. Small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and the big real estate sector. Keep the building. Or we're selling it for nothing. Can't pay the mortgage. Oh, oh, these are floating loans. So now interest rates have gone way up. Now I got to pay more on my loan and I got less tenants. The banking bust has just begun. The banking bust has just begun. It's going to hit small and medium sized businesses. Trillions of dollars of debt are coming up at the end of this year. And they're not going to be able to pay it. And what the banks, what do they do? Or oh, they bought the U.S. bonds back when interest rates were near zero. They're worth nothing. So you're going to start seeing a banking crisis the likes of which we've never seen before. The, by the way, what's going on now with the office vacancy rates is the worst since World War II. Because World War II... They're drafting everybody. Everybody's going overseas. So that emptied the, the buildings out. It's the worst since then. And the media hardly talks about it. We had forecast this three years ago. Wow. It, it must be a burden to be, you know, ahead of the game uh, on, on seeing what's coming down the road. Because um, you guys have been on spot on so many times. That's why I love your journal. <laughs> it's just it's just so good. Um, okay, really quick, because um, I know we're we're limited on time here. Uh, President Biden said a year ago, if we give jets to Ukraine, it's World War Three. Then he's over in Japan. They're commemorating uh, the United States dropping bombs on uh, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and he announces. We're going to give jets and jet training to Ukraine. Are, are they dragging us into war? Does he want to be a wartime president that's so desperate to get reelected 
or is this just stupidity? What what is going on? Combination. He's a warmongering little freak, a Vietnam War draft dodger that out of his mind. Again, World War II is an ancient history. Isn't Dresden beautifully destroyed? How about Berlin? How about, according to John F. Kennedy, his speech to graduating students at American University, over 20 million Russians were killed in their land, their farms, their houses, their manufacturing, destroyed from Chicago East. That much was destroyed. This isn't ancient history. We got maniacs, demonic maniacs in charge. World War III has already begun. Hey, listen, Stephen, I need some guns and a hand gr- and, and some grenades. I want to go kill the guy next door. If you gave him to me, are you an accessory to the crime? America's at war. NATO's at war with Russia. So, again, Trends Journal, 2014. That guy happy? All about the United States who of Viktor Yanukovych, the democratically elected gov- uh, president of Ukraine. So I'm totally opposed for Russia's invasion. Totally understand why it happened. But going back, the Russians are already saying that the UK is at war with them. And so is the United States and NATO. They're saying it. And again, Biden, you go back. Biden wasn't going to send missiles. Biden wasn't going to do this. Biden wasn't going to do that. And he backtracked on everything. All the details are there. His words, not ours. Again, we got maniacs in charge. And and if it, there's going to be a false flag event, whether it's a nuclear exchange or something, if World War Three begins, uh, it, when it escalates, I should say, it's begun. They asked Albert Einstein, cat that knew a thing or two about the atomic bomb. They asked him, what kind of weapons will be used to fight the Third World War? He said, I don't know. But they'll be using sticks and stones to fight the fourth. Thanks. Oof. That's heavy. Do you and know? That's why I launched Occupy Peace and have peace rallies. I'm doing everything I can to fight. I'm not just talking about it. And everybody has to do something. Everybody has to do something. What are you doing? Could you imagine oh, this guy, Sam Zell, just died, right? A billionaire. I said, did Zell go to hell? What did Zell do with his billions to help the people of the world and bring peace on earth, goodwill to all? What is Musk doing? What is Bezos doing? What is Gates doing? What is Zuckerberg doing? What is Buffett doing? How about giving us a, eh, let's say $5 million to occupy peace? Screw you, Salenti. We're not going to give you a penny, but we'll support the war machine. Yeah. So the people have to do something. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of medicine, Samuel Adams. And your audience is that irate, tireless minority. And people say to me, oh, Salenti, you get angry. You're right. I get angry. I get angry when a situation is right to get angry. And you don't have to believe me. There was also a cat by the name of St. Thomas Aquinas who said, anyone who is not angry when it's morally just to be angry is immoral. Because you should be angry when it's morally just to be angry. And I am angry with war. Oh, we're talking about the debt ceiling. Not a word about matter of fact, even when they were saying we're going to build, we're going to default. The Pentagon will get all the money that it needs. And now it's almost up to a $900 billion a year. And then when you put the intelligence, which is an oxymoron, when you talk about the CIA, FBI, NSA, and, and uh, Homeland Security, it's over a trillion dollars. As our infrastructure is rotting in front of our eyes, as the homeless are filling up the streets, are people living, people living paycheck to paycheck? How dare I talk about peace and want to build up America? backwards it's so backwards okay you you brought up the fbi i had a question that i wanted to ask you uh we now know that the fbi played a rather large part in the trump 
Russia gate hoax. Um, and part of that, it, many analysts are saying it was to stir up anti-Russian hate. And another part was to take out Trump. Uh, is, is anybody at the FBI going to be held accountable for the damage that they've done to our country? Or are, are they like everyone else just going to get away with their crimes in Washington, D.C.? They get away with it. We wrote about this as it was happening in the Trends Journal. We, we, we knew it was a scam right from the beginning. I forgot that guy and his girlfriend that was another FBI guy uh, what, going back and forth. When it, it, it was, the whole thing was a scam. It's a, again, why do we even have an FBI? That's what, 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 J. Edgar Hoover? I mean, what are you kidding me? We don't need an FBI. Tell me the great things. Please tell me that the NSA has done the CIA and the FBI for we the people. Tell me the great things that they've accomplished. Tell me one. Tell me one. I, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> How many countless trillion? They won't even tell us the trillions of dollars that we spend on their own intelligence is an oxymoron, by the way. Nothing intelligent about them, intelligence agencies. They won't even tell us how much we spent. It's a crime syndicate in charge. We need a new, we need a, a new way. Again, I call them repulsive kins and democrats. They're a crime syndicate, they're murderers and thieves. By the deeds you shall know them. Hey, I'm too big to fail. I'm Jamie Dimon. You could go to hell. Oh, Federal Reserve, $29 trillion they dumped into the markets from 2007 when the crash began to 2010. Oh, that's not my number. That's from Bard College, Levy Institute. $29 trillion. Hey, I'm too big to fail. You're just a piece of crap. You're a plantation worker of a slave land here. You could, we could care less about you. We don't care if you lose your house. Yeah, your cause, we don't care. We're we're all just pawns in a game that we don't want to be playing. That's right. Well said. Oh. And again, people have to do something. And we launched Occupy Peace. If you want to donate, you know, help us get this message out. Do you know how, what kind of work to put on these rallies it, it takes and the money it costs? And again, we had Dennis Kucinich, John Whitehead, Frank Morano, Craig Jardula. Uh, Gary No, one speaker after another. People from from coast to coast, from Canada to America, were here. Great, great crowd, and we're doing. We want to keep pushing this forward to get not one piece of coverage in the local media or the national media, despite sending out thousands of press releases. They don't want your message out. They want war. They don't want peace. They don't want peace. We want peace. The people want the peace. Yep. But they don't work for the people anymore. Nope. Oh, my gosh. They're prostitutes. They're media whores that get paid to put out by their corporate pimps and their government whore masters. And you could thank another sl that slime ball Clinton for this as well. When he deregulated the communications, the Federal Communications Act in 1996, allowed the bigs to buy up everything. Same guy that deregulated the Glass-Steagall Act. One slime, what do you think they pay that crap mouth $300,000 to BS for an hour? It's called payback. And you buy these politicians off cheap. Yeah. What do you got? Five companies control over 90% of the media. I think about 90, 92%, 95%, five companies. Wow. Oh, again, the Tucker Carlson story. Like Tucker Carlson, hate Tucker Carlson, not the issue. One person that doesn't say the exact same thing as 99.9999%. Get him out of here. Get him out. Well, even though he had one of the most watched shows in history, yep. making Fox News mega amounts of money, yep. if they can't control him, he's out. Unreal. Again, I used to be on Oprah. I was on Oprah twice. I used to be on CNN four times a month back in the day. On, on all the newspapers, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, I was everywhere. When I said the United States would lose the Afghan and Iraq war, get Salenti out of here. Wow. Well, you, you ended up being right. Well, this has been a great show. You're always welcome on my show. 
Oh, thank you. Uh, thank I know, you. I, I know thank you so much. Yeah. I know our, I know a couple, a handful of our interviews have been suppressed. I can see it right in the data. They don't want our message getting out, yeah. but we're just going to keep putting it out there because the American people want peace. They want prosperity. They want freedom. And of course, we don't want to get blacklisted. So you can't say anything about COVID. So I'm going to put my mask on so we'll be safe and uh, you don't spread the uh, the virus to me. And remember, everywhere you go, don't forget to sanitize your hands. <laughs> remember, <laughs> especially, you know, when you, I mean, look at the stupidity. Look at this. I go to the health food stores over here, I, very all organic. 60% of the people are still wearing these masks that the box says don't work. <laughs> yeah, the very box itself from China. These do not stop, you know, the virus. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it was compared to like basically like uh, a tennis ball going through a chain link fence. That virus just goes right through the mask. No yep. problem. Boom. Yep. Again, you're breathing air through it. You got it? Yeah, I mean, this, this isn't rocket science. And don't forget to stand six feet apart because the wind blows exactly in straight lines and six feet doesn't go up, doesn't go down, and doesn't go around. And when you walk into a restaurant, put that mask on. Well, when you sit down, you can take it off because virus knows doesn't go at table height. And when you're in the airplane, don't forget, walk on with your mask. But you can take it off when you eat and drink because the virus knows when you're eating and drinking doesn't bother you. Look at the stupidity that they created. Again, the damage that this has done mentally, spiritually, economically, physically, incalculable. Crime rates skyrocket. Drug overdoses. Uh, uh, um, uh, suicide rates. One after another. Business is going out of business and not one scintilla of scientific evidence all done on political science. Oh, by the way, these are our new T-shirts that you could get on our so at the uh, Trends Journal site. This is the summer one. Oh. Did you see that? Hey, politicians, who the blank are you to tell me what to do? <laughs> is that your, is that your own finger? <laughs> to the these politicians? They forgot two words, public servant, yeah. public servant. Look at the arrogant Chucky Schumann's, all the little clowns. You got some Gavin Newsom, one little jerk after another, the arrogance of them telling us what to do. So you can get these shirts if you go to trendsjournal.com and go to the shop and you can get one. And, that, and that's where I'm at. And I, by the way, as you, I don't know if you know this, I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. I was, I was the chief, I, I've been with I, pictures of me picking up Ronald Reagan at 30 years old at Chicago Hilton, putting on a brunch for 16 of our board of directors. Uh, two days before he's announced against Gerald Ford. I've been with presidents, prime ministers, and princes. I know the deal. Who are these arrogant little people who tell us what to do? How about the American spirit? Want to be free. Yeah. Well, they, they, don't, they don't want it. And I appreciate you bringing this stuff to light. And I appreciate you coming on today's show. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on again. It really is a pleasure. I know how busy you are and how much you're doing. And I just love the Trends Journal. Everybody should go to trendsjournal.com and uh, check it out. Support free voices, free thinking. Uh, it, it's a great, great place to be kept in the loop. Just like coming to this channel is a great place for, for freedom thinkers. I have a t-shirt. I don't have it. I should hold it up. But it's an eagle coming in and, and, and it says freedom lover. And yeah. uh, that's me. That's you. And that's yep. the people that watch this channel. Again, so. thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day, Gerald Salente. Thank you so much.